RuneScape has had a grasp on so many people across the world for the last two decades. Today I'm going to ask everyone to put on your nostalgia tinted glasses and rewind the clocks exactly 20 years to March of 2004, the release of RuneScape 2. I will be taking you all on a visual journey and putting some of the most important RuneScape updates in a timeline so everyone can get an idea of just how special RuneScape was from the very beginning. The day is March 29th, 2004, and RuneScape 2 is officially released. RuneScape Classic players are able to copy their stats and transfer their items to the new game, instantly breathing life into the new world. This comes with countless new exciting updates such as the Duel Arena, the Runecrafting skill, new Dragonhide armor, and the new banknote system. There are a countless amount of changes from RuneScape Classic to RuneScape 2, and that could honestly be a video in itself. The main purpose of this video is to show off the updates from 2004 in chronological order so everyone is able to get a sense of what it might have been like to play during these updates. It really is quite amazing looking at a news post just days after on March 31st, 2004. It lists a whole bunch of updates that we know and love, and some that actually never made it into the game. The post teases a new Viking style area, frozen lands with penguins, mammoths, and polar bears, a pyramid full of traps, and it even hints at barrows. In the same news post, they go on to even list skills that are well over a year or two away, listing the carpentry skill and the farming skill. As we know, not all of those updates will make into 2004, and some won't make it into the game at all, but what we do know is that RuneScape has big plans for 2004. Today's video is sponsored by Taris Land, a classic MMORPG playable on PC and mobile devices featuring raids, diverse classes, crossplay, and a vast world for exploration. Derived from the classic warrior, mage, and priest classes, Taris Land has nine different classes to choose from, each coming with two specializations for you to further customize your playstyle. Each profession has a diverse and flexible talent tree system, allowing for adjustments based on different combat scenarios to find what build works best for you. Throw yourself right into the action with different bosses and raids, cooperating with teams to overcome unique in-game mechanics. Terraceland will launch a pre-registration site hosting a special H5 event. This will provide players with opportunities to earn various rewards by completing different tasks, such as visiting Google Play and the Apple Store and inviting friends to pre-register. And during this period, Tyrusland will release the Global KOL Blessing video, a video composed of several creators from different regions. You can follow your favorite creators from all over the world that have also pre-registered and see what chosen class they have picked. To pre-register, all you have to do is go down to the link in the description and sign up there. So don't wait around, sign up today, and I'll see you over there. Thanks so much to Tarasland for sponsoring today's video. Up until this point, rings didn't have a use. They were just a flashy item. On April 20th, the ability to enchant rings is updated. This brings several new rings into the game, including the Ring of Recoil, Ring of Dueling, Ring of Forging, Ring of Life, and the Ring of Wealth. The only option on the Ring of Dueling was to teleport to the Dueling Arena, and the Ring of Wealth becomes the best ring to wear, allowing a much greater chance for the shield left half, which is half of the best shield in the game, and even a new weapon by the name of a Dragon Spear. On May 5th, Treasure Trails are now released into the game. Described as being a similar rarity to low-level gems, monsters will now occasionally drop clues for the player to go on the hunt. The first batch of clue scrolls contains several iconic items such as trimmed armor, god armor, Robin Hood hats, and ranger boots. Yes, the ranger boots did actually look like that and they'll stay that way for the entirety of 2004. On June 14th, special attacks are now released into the game, or special moves as they once referred to it in a teaser post. Upon release, the first items to get a special attack were all of the current dragon weapons, the Excalibur, rune throwing axes, and magic bows. Magic short bows used to have a special attack of 50% and for the entirety of 2004 would stay at that energy usage until deemed too powerful in the early months of 2005. On June 29th, new lands open up to the east of what we today know as Mauritania. The Priest and Peril quest is released, allowing access into the new swamps. The City of Canifis is also released at this time. There really isn't much going on here as of now, but Jagex has big plans to update it as we will see later in 2004. July 27th brings a new agility update that allows players to collect tickets in exchange for rewards and XP. There's also two new herbs that are in the shop, Toadflax and Snapdragon. 
This brings along two new potions for the Herblore skill, being an Agility Potion and the Super Restore. Taverly now gets an expansion. What was a dead end now opens up into a new kingdom of Birthorpe. This comes alongside the Death Plateau quests, unlocking new boots that give strength XP called the Climbing Boots, as well as a new shield with a best-in-slot range defense, the Granite Shield. On September 7th, new bugs are found within a hole that goes deep into the Caridian Desert. Calphites are released with the newest and baddest boss RuneScape has ever seen, the Calphite Queen. The Fabled Dragon Chain Body is released, offering a new best-in-slot melee chain body. Keep in mind that a Dragon Longsword and an MSB were still the best weapons in the game. Soloing this new boss would be risky and near impossible. On September 20th, the fourth quest in the Plague City Saga gets released, Regicide. This opens up new forested elven lands to the west, as well as RuneScape's new strongest weapon with a whopping 89 strength bonus. Arguably, against certain monsters, the Dragon Halberd was the new best spec weapon in the game, hitting two big hit splats with an extra 10% extra damage and 25% less accuracy. A much needed expansion to Mauritania finally arrives on October 18th, 2004. Best in slot magic gear up until this point was the extremely low tier wizard robes, making this update much needed. Shades of Morton, alongside the City of Morton, is released, and in this mini game you can acquire the fine cloth which was needed to create the new best in slot magic gear, Split Bark. Up until November 2nd, the lands beyond Sinclair Mansion were barren and desolate. Today the Fremnic Trials quest is released, and with it comes a new city by the name of Relica. The Vikings have officially arrived, and with it comes a new best in slot magic head slot the Seer's Helmet, and the new best-in-slot melee helmet, the Berserker Helm. The Warrior Helm was generally considered less powerful than the Berserker Helm since it swapped strength bonus for attack bonus, and the Archer Helm was outclassed by a Robin Hood hat. Although, the Archer's Helmet was still seen as useful by many as it was much cheaper than a Robin and it still gave a plus 6 range bonus compared to the Robin's 8. Keeping with the trend of the Fremnic Land updates, the Horror from the Deep quest is released on November 17th. This gives new prayer books that specialize in attack bonuses, defense bonuses, and even one that balances out the two. These new god books will only have their prayer bonus of plus 5, unless you find pages to fill them with, which can be found in the new Clue Scroll rewards. There's no shortage of Viking updates this month, with the release of the Throne of Miscellanea quest on the 29th of November. Players can now become the king or queen of this distant land, and even have the ability to gain high favor in their kingdom. The higher your favor, the more resources your subjects are willing to collect for you. Finally entering the last month of 2004, there is still no shortage of iconic updates. On December 6th, the Monkey Madness quest is released, and in Jagex's own words, this is one of the longest and most challenging quests yet. Although don't get too nervous, the reign of the Dragon Longsword was still in full swing as the Dragon Scimitar would not be added into the game and available for purchase until March 29th of 2005, exactly one year after RS2 is released. December 13th is here and Jagex has dropped, in my opinion, the greatest update to ever happen to RuneScape. The Land Beyond the Ogres finally opens up and arguably the most iconic minigame to ever exist is released, Castle Wars. Players would battle it out and fight for either Zamorak or Saradomen and attempt to capture their enemy's flag. At the time, the Red Castle Wars armor were the only items purchasable from Lathis and it had stats equivalent to Mithril. Many players were saying the armor is too easy to get and in an effort to not devalue Mithril armor, yes, Mithril armor, Jagex updated the minigame a week later to make the red armor now have the same stats as steel. And this brings us to the last major update in 2004 on December 21st, the Haunted Mine Quest. Mauritania is once again expanded, and this time it leads us deep inside an abandoned mine. The reward for completing this quest is the Salve Amulet, which boosts both the wearer's attack and strength by 16.67% while fighting the undead. Although it's a niche item, this does in fact make it the new best-in-slot melee necklace in many circumstances. That's going to wrap up the major 2004 updates. Please let me know if you'd like to see a 2005 version of this as well. If you made it to the end of the video, you're now obligated to tell me your favorite memory from your childhood playing RuneScape. I had a blast looking at all the old models, and I hope you did as well. I'll see you all in the next one, guys.